You may have heard of the milk bath nails. They're gorgeous. I'm gonna do my version in acrylic and gel. Might see a little leads in there. <laughs> Let's have some fun. So I went rummaging around in the backyard in our beautiful English garden, right, cameraman? Oh, it's nice. Oh, yeah. I'm we quite have, the gardener. Yes. Oh, yes. It's it's extraordinary. We have some prize weeds back there, probably like six feet tall, right? <laughs> so I've grabbed some flowers. We do have a beautiful um, red rose bush and a yellow one. This is kind of dried up. I picked the ones that are kind of dried up. It's very beautiful, but it's really out of control. We do need some serious help in the garden area. And did you notice the beautiful pink flowers? Look at that. In the backyard, there's this giant bush with these beautiful pink flowers. We don't go back there much, apparently. So I grabbed these ones a little while ago. I was going to put them in fresh, and then they dried out by the time I got around to it. So it kind of worked to my advantage. They're dried out now. So I posted a message on my Instagram, on my story, saying, is there any troubleshooting things that you guys are finding about the milk bath? And one thing I did learn was some people were putting in dried flowers, and then some people were putting in fresh flowers. They both go down very nicely. They're beautiful. I've inlaid dried flowers before, but I've never really put in fresh flowers. But some people were finding after time, maybe three weeks in, the fresh flowers were kind of browning and kind of blech. <laughs> so dried flowers would be recommended. So I've got lots of little dried flowers in here, and we're going to cut it up. You only need a tiny little bit anyway. So that's what we're going to do. I've got this little plate, and you need yourself some little scissors. Little scissors, I find, are really unique. Oh, Critter's making some noise down there. He's joined us today. He's um, lounging on the carpet. Critter, Critter. Hey, Critter. Yeah? What's going on? No, -uh. He's not impressed. So little scissors I find are the best for cutting out those little tiny flowers. And when you're talking flowers, of course you can't, you know, take a big flower like this and make it look like a flower on here. So you want to take pieces of it. So I've been playing around a little bit with it last night before I decided to come down and do this video. And I find that you can cut chunks of it off, but if you shape it in a little bit of flowers, it gives a bit more of a floral flowers floating in your milk bath. Okay, so I need some glasses and I am going to just take what I see here. Now, I'm going to work with the blue and the yellow, I think. I've got this beautiful mauve and yellow gel polish and we're going to do this hand and we're going to do two fingers, one acrylic and one gel and see the difference in the looks with it and see how it goes down. It pretty much goes down the same, you guys, but just a few little different things here and there. Okay, so there are some extraordinary colors in here. And I noticed with little bits too, and I, ooh, look at this. See that little green, little spiky thing? Let's cut that off. Those might look really cool in there. So let's see if we can bring this out a little bit and see what we got. I really like, and you want to get little, little pieces, and I like all the shapes that this has created. Look at that. Little spikes on there. So we're going to keep that one. And let's get a bunch. Now, I'm only doing two nails. We don't need a ton. I'll just kind of... And I do love the little bits, too. Whenever I've done dried flowers, I like the one big flower. Like, I've got dried flowers that are really, really tiny and they're different colors. But I like the little bits around it. Because then it doesn't look like a big plump of dried flower there. The little bits sort of make it all kind of come together. So let's put that guy over there. And I noticed something with this flower. I don't even remember what it was. But it's really pretty, this yellow. Oopsie. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Look at, oh, it's beautiful. So let's get some of the yellow. I love this color of yellow is extraordinary. I might even cut them smaller as we go, but I like these little bits. See this? That almost reminds me of the dried flowers that I use. I didn't realize it was so fuzzy in the center. Look at that. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a bunch of this here and I'm gonna cut off these little because they look like tiny little buds. Oh, critter. He clearly doesn't know that I'm filming. Okay, those are too pretty. Okay, now there's these little, these ones too I picked. There's lots of little flowers in the yard we got there, Caraman. Yeah, they're beautiful. They are, they're adorable. Are these, these flowers, are they actually weeds? Well, we have nice little weeds. We got a lot of weeds going. Yeah. Fortunately, I think they're beautiful. 
<laughs> I think we're condo people. <laughs> Even dandelions, I love. Yes, that's true. Oh, look at this adorable leaf. Oh, that's going in. I like that. That's a cute little leaf. I want another one of those. Teeny tiny. Okay. I'm just going to grab this little leaf and put it. Oh, what's up, little thing? Probably wants outside, but he he, wants. he can go outside and we have a nice little patio and he can go in and out whenever he wants. This is pretty. This looks like an iris. I don't know if he can fit it on there, but look at the veins in it. The dried. Oh, that's extraordinary. Let's see if we can make that work. I'm probably getting too carried away with all this. He stuff. wants out. Oh, Cameron, you gotta let him out. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Kitty break. Okay. How long do you want to make a bet before it takes before he gets back in here again? Who, me? No, the cat. Oh, well, he's. <laughs> no, you, you have to come back gone, in here. He's going on the patio. That's where he's. <laughs> that's going. where he's heading. He hears oh. all the talk about, it and he's like, "Yeah, that's you know, right." It's, it's, now it's, that you mention it, I think I want to go outside. Or he's just not into flowers. <laughs> okay, so look at this. This was the weed. Okay, that's not so bad. I don't mind that. It's a pretty one. Uh huh. Lovely color. You just think there's maybe a you know how there's flower competitions like the best in show, best flower. I wonder if there's a weed one. We'd win some of those. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I kind of want to stick with that blue and yellow, but this might not be dried enough. This is still fresh. I mean, I do do videos once a week, so I will change it in a week. So I won't really have the longevity of it four weeks in to see what it's going to do. But I'll take people's word for it when they say it goes kind of mushy. Um... Okay, I think I've, um, you know, I'm getting carried away. This is enough now. <laughs> I got lots. That's, okay. That's a lot to cover your nails. It's a lot. I mean, we're only talking two nails here. It's not like it's a giant thumb and all my fingers are thumb size, right? Okay, so I'm just a little housekeeping here. Okay, so I took all my nails off my hand that I always work on. And we're going to put these flowers over here. Oh, there's a spider on the table. There's the hazard of picking your own flowers in the garden. I was wondering about that. <laughs> well, you I think flowers in the stores would have it too. He's awfully cute. Oh, don't hurt him. I'm not. Oh, I'm just moving him out of the way. He's creeping me out a little. I'll, I'll, I got to get him. I'll get a cup. He's kind of cute, but he's got a black widow body. He does, actually. He's kind of cute. Look at him. He's looking at you. You could have just put them on a flower. I think you've been quite happy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a dedicated cup for. Don't just forget, like. Cup for spiders. I wonder if there's any more in there. Okay, now I'm going to bust. So I've taken all the acrylic or gel, I can't remember what I had on there last, all off my nails. And now I'm just going to prep these nails. Remember, we're going to do two fingers. I'm just going to gently buff the natural nail. I use an arbor band when I'm buffing the natural nail, and I use a medium or fine arbor band. I find that is very gentle and perfect for buffing up the natural nail. And you want a very, very light pressure. Now I said we're gonna do one acrylic and one gel. So let's start with the acrylic. We've got our little flowers all prepared. Let's put them right there oh, until we need them. You found your shiny thing. I did. It's full of, remember we did that disastrous, painted my gel, my nails with um, blindfolded. Don't recommend that. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing this and how good you are at it. I was terrible at it. Absolutely terrible. Okay, so I'm going to get a form and we're going to start forming it up. So with the acrylic, it's great because the flowers will stick to the acrylic. 
So you wanna lay down some acrylic first for some forming it. Forming a nail is an art within itself. I have a few videos on how to form a nail uh, perfectly. And if you don't get that right, it's like, it's like if you're building a house and the foundation is crooked, the whole thing's gonna be crooked. So the form is crucial for gel or acrylic, no matter what you're doing. Even when you're putting a tip, a tip is a sense of a form. And that's also when you put that up. So this part is really, really important to get that right. Now, because this is acrylic, I'm going to need um, a prep, a dehydrator. And you wanna gently put that on the nail and then you want a primer. And when you're using a primer, you wanna make sure you do not oversaturate that nail. Just gently put it on just to cover the nail. You don't wanna to put too much on because you don't want it to soak under to the matrix, which is the root of the nail. And that's beyond the cuticle. So just gently put that on. Okay, now I wanna mention something that's coming. This is my new brush, my new signature brush. It's the most perfect shape, is, which is, is my favorite. It's an oval eight, it's my favorite. Okay, so I want, got my monomer here, got my paper towel. I'm not doing this any specific product today. This is not a sponsored video. This is just me showing you a technique and educating you the difference between uh, inlaying the milk bath flowers, nails with acrylic and gel. And right now I'm gonna put down I always like to do this beforehand because I file to it when I take it off. And that is, I'm just going to put a soft, thin, thin layer of the pink. Just any pink that you like. I particularly like um, a little mixture that I do just to cause a nice kind of a soft look on the nail, like a foundation, sort of like a foundation that you put on your skin. I'm gonna do this nice and thin. I'm doing it upside down so it's hard. I'm just gonna flip it up this way for a sec. Okay, so I'm gonna go back this way. So when considering a milk bath nail, the milk is what you're trying to simulate in the acrylic color. I mix white with some clear. And that's what I did here in this little pot. So by doing that, it's creating sort of a milk that's not solid white, because milk isn't solid white. It is when it's fully in a glass, but when it's floating around in a bath, it's not so solid white. That's how you're able to see the flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna gather some of that mixture I have between white and clear. And you'll see that it's kind of, I'm gonna lay it down here first. I wanna put the flowers on top of that. I'm going to do like a long almond. That's my favorite shape. I do want to do this quite thin. So I'm gonna just, this may be longer than what I want, but I'm gonna pan it out because I don't want it to be thick. Yeah, I've just took a little bit too big of a bead. I'm gonna take a little bead here and try to see if I can soften this out. My idea was to be doing a bit of an ombre. cover a flower in there but just get that little divot out of there. I put that in there by mistake. Okay this is when you can lay the flowers in. I'm gonna do it nice and low. Now whether you're doing this with acrylic or gel or tips or anything 
you want to make sure this part is relatively low. Where you come into trouble with doing any type of inlay, and that's what this is really, an inlay, where you come into trouble with that is if you don't do the base part low enough, then you put your inlay in of whatever you're doing. Then when you clear cap it on top, by the time you start shaping, because you want your nail to be a certain thinness, if you go down too far into your clear cap, because you're trying to shape it, you don't want it too big and thick, you'll dive right into your inlay part, which is what we're trying to avoid. So the key part about this is making this part relatively low, okay? Now we want to lay our inlay. So what you can do is put a little monomer on there. And now, where are my tweezers? There we are. And now we're going to bring back the flowers and find little pieces that we like and lay it in. Remember, I really like this leaf. Let's see if we can lay him right in there. I'm just gonna wet it a little bit again. I keep my brush nearby to do that. Just have to find the pieces that I really want in here. Ooh, look at these little, oh yeah, okay. I really like the little bits. The little bits really kind of tie it all together for me. Ooh, these are cute. Now to make them flatter, you know, you can flatten them in a book. I think you could do that for a couple weeks and it will be a very, very flat image. That's gorgeous. Now, see how it's kind of bouncing a little? You can take a little bit, maybe even the milk bath if you want, the milk bath color that is, acrylic, and you can put a little on there if you're getting a little bit of a stubborn one, and you can stick it right into it. Honestly, you guys, you really don't want to touch the acrylic with your skin all the time. After doing that for a while, you can get contact dermatitis. This stuff is not meant to touch the skin all the time. You want to be able to just use mostly your tools. And sometimes you get carried away and you do it, but I don't recommend that you do. You can also develop allergies if you keep doing that over and over and over. And that's what you don't want. Once you get an allergy to something, that's it. You get an allergy to strawberries. So I'm touching it, but I'm touching the leaf, not the product. Cute. I really like those colors. I need some yellow in there, don't I? This is where you can get really, where you have a lot of fun finding the different things to put in. I also like the fact that I can overlap. I really like that. Remember those veiny things, like that one was really veiny? I think I need to cut that out. Cut it up a little bit. See, you can really see the veins of that flower. Whether that will look good in the long run, I don't know, but I'll give it a go. I'm gonna use a bit of clear to see if that works. I don't wanna chop up that little yellow one I got there. You can really see the veins on that one. You don't like the veins? I do like it. Oh, don't okay. you? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to use clear when I put that on top because if I use the milk bath, it might cover the veins. And that's honestly what I really, really like about that one. So when I put my milk bath stuff on top, I want to be very careful that I don't cover those veins. Oh. You blew your flower <laughs> off. Yeah, I did. So I'm just gonna bring this a little closer so I can. I definitely need some yellow in there. I'm gonna get a little clear and put it, actually that's a lot of clear. I'm gonna put some bigger one over here. This one, let's try this one. Yeah, he's not happy either. Okay, so I'm just going to get a little clear and I'm going to put it right there. See one that I like and I'm going to pop this guy right there. I'm going to stick it down inside that clear. Now he's sticking up on the one end. I'm going to 
talk them down. Sort of molding it right around there. I mean, I'm getting kind of picky because I'm trying to place them a little bit. I want a little bit of, and you can just grind them all in there. You certainly can do it. I've seen people do that. It looks really cool. But for some reason, I feel the need to like place them. I want it to look a little flowery. I think because there's so little that if I just cut up little bits, I just have a bunch of little bits and I just want it to look a little bit more flowerish. Okay, I still think I need some yellow in there, so let's throw some yellow in. Okay, I'm gonna stick a little bit more clear. I think I need a little yellow there. This would look cute there. Let's get a little yellow down here. I'm feeling the lack of yellow down there. That's a nice bright piece right there. And I'm gonna cut the tip off. It's like a root, I don't need that part. Pretty. I like yeah, it. it is cute, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is really nice. Something over there. We need something over there, don't we? These yellow ones are very pretty. That one in there, nice. Pretty. Okay, so I think this is looking pretty good. You know, I don't want to overdo it because not like I have a tendency to do that or anything. Never. No, never, no. Okay, so I do see a couple little, I could get some greenery in there. A little green bud. That we can, oh, that's cute. Yeah, he's good in there. He's just having an attitude with me. He's going in there whether he likes it or not. It's a perfect spot. It just needs to be there. Okay. Okay, there's a little lacking there, don't you think? I think it needs something over there. Yeah. I don't know what. Oh, that one's cute. It's white, though. Okay, let me see if I can... I don't think I want something purple because... Maybe a little green thing. Here's a green leaf, but he's too long. So I'm just going to cut it. Put it off to the side. Where'd that go? Okay. So that's looking pretty good. The question would be at this point, do I just want to clear cap that? Or do we put a little bit more, you might say, milk around it? I could do that, but I'm afraid to lose some of the detail there. But I feel like that's what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to put a little bit around there. I'm like a little nervous because, but I do want it to look kind of milky. it's just an inlay then, right? That's you know? right. It's supposed to look like it's suspended in milk, right? That was the whole idea. It's like floating in a milk bath, right? 
I know you've never had a milk bath. You probably don't know anything about it. I've never physically seen one. Do you have any idea what we're even talking about? Um, I can imagine, I think. Cleopatra had milk baths. Apparently they're very good for your skin. Very hydrating. Really? Maybe you should have one tonight, Caraman. I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> There's bacteria in milk, right? Mm. What? Bacteria. Okay. I think I have to clear cap it. Okay, here we go. Let's clear cap this guy. I might flip it over to do it in this way. So I want to get a nice acrylic bead, pop that right down on the whole design and encase the whole thing. So even if you have different depths and stuff with your the stuff that you put in there, the flowers or the milk bath stuff, it doesn't matter. This will encase it. This is why it's so important that your first layer is so, so thin because most of your strength, well, the strength for the nail will be built in the clear cap. So it's really important that you have mostly clear cap. Clear acrylic is stronger than colored acrylic because when you put the pigment in, it reduces the strength a little. So you really want most of the nail to be the clear. It's often why we clear cap a pigment. Okay, that looks lumpy and bumpy. Now I'm not going that long. I'm just gonna do it to the to the design so it looks a little funny in the end. But that's where sculpting comes in, right? Just gonna make sure I've got that covered so when I do sculpt and shape it, I don't run into my flowers. Okay. Now, when you clear cap, acrylic always clouds it up a little bit. It won't remain that way once you top coat it. It just does that when um, you're working with it. Okay, well, that's a lumpy, bumpy mess, but I can take this off. I'm just going to clean my acrylic brush. Just a little tip when you're cleaning your acrylic brush. I rarely need acetone in my acrylic brush, but I do recommend if you do get a hardened clump in there, you can soak it in acetone and it will remove it. You don't want to leave the acetone in the brush because it will dry the bristles out and you don't want to do that. So you want to condition it back again in your monomer. But if there is nothing in there, which there won't be most likely if you're always trying to clean your brush, and if you're using the liquid to powder ratio correctly, that's when you don't get anything in your brush. If you're getting lumpy, clumpy stuff and you're working with it and it's in there and you can't get it out, it's just because you're working with your liquid to powder a little bit on the wet side. So if you just try to make your bead a little more consistent, then you won't get that problem. And it's really tough. Don't be hard on yourself. It is something that uh, takes a bit of practice, right? You might even go through a few brushes. Okay, so I just always condition it. Make sure there's nothing in there as far as acrylic goes. And I just condition it in there and I twirl it to see. I've done a video on this too. I twirl it to make sure there's no product in there. I've gotten back to my point. I've got the monomer soaking in it, keeping it nice and supple, you might say. And then you put a cap back on it and it keeps it very happy. It's mm. great. Well, that took a little while. I was going to do them all in one video, but that ran long enough. Let's do this part one and join me for the gel one in part two. Okay, let's take some time to answer some questions. So my first question is, Susie, my name is Genesis and I'm 10 years old. I was wondering why I, when I use acrylic, the product sticks a lot to my brush and leaves huge clumps of product. Sweetheart, this is a common problem a lot of people have with liquid and powder, which is the liquid and the powder. That's the acrylic systems. So when you are dipping into your liquid and you're dipping into your powder, you probably have too much monomer, which is the liquid. You want to have less. So when you dip in, 
go in with your brush, but then hit it on the side a couple of times to release some of that liquid. And then when you go into your powder, you're picking up your bead, it's about three seconds, should warrant a really good bead. And then when you place that bead on your finger, if it's a perfect liquid and powder ratio, it should just release and it'll just be happy and sit there. At that point, this is when you can get a paper towel and clean your brush just like that. If there's stuff stuck in there, that means there's too much liquid and you're, it's not releasing. It's a very common problem. A lot of you are having it. I actually did a video on that too to address this problem. Good question. <laughs> That's fantastic. This is our future nail tech here. This is fabulous. Do you have to cure stamps or let them dry before you top coat? Well, curing is only a process that we use for gel or gel polish. In this case, when you're doing stamps, you're doing it with nail polish or paint. And that just needs the air to dry. So by the time you pick up your stamp, you place it onto the nail, you let that dry for maybe a few seconds. You don't, I will tell you this though, this is, I learned the hard way. Don't use a quick drying top coat because when you use a quick drying top coat, it will smear, it can smear the nail polish that you just put on. So it doesn't need much time to dry at all. Those pigments, those really high pigmented, good quality nail polishes meant for stamping, they dry pretty quick, so you're okay. No curing in the lamp involved, just needs a little bit of time and then you top coat and you're good to go. Good question. Okay, Susie. I wish you and Carmen would put up more videos more often. That's a great question. Well, I will tell you guys, um, we would love to, but each video that we do requires quite a bit of time. It's really a very big production. It's a, it's a big deal. There is like, doesn't look like it, but there is, how many cameramans, how many cameras have you got going on here, cameraman? Right now we have seven going. Right. And there's only two of us doing it. We don't have like a whole crew. Um, so shooting it, you know, we take a lot of time to coordinate everything and figure out what we're going to do. We've done a lot of videos now, so I can't just think of anything to do anymore. I've got to think about what I haven't done and what's maybe new going on. So there's a bit of that involved. And then shooting it takes about, you know, a couple hours to a half a day. And then, then the production starts. That's where most of the work comes in, where cameraman then takes it and he's editing it. And that can take anywhere from one to two days, maybe three, depending on how long the video is. There's a lot of editing that goes involved. He tries to, make, you know, color correct so it all looks really pretty. And um, what else do you do, camera? Sound. Music. And music, you know, placing the music to make sure it sounds really good and it moves the video along and it's not too loud or too crazy or just crazy enough in the right spot. So there's a lot of production that goes involved. So because we want a really high quality to present to you guys, so when you're watching it, you can see all the angles and really close and enjoy the music. And hopefully my voice isn't too annoying. <laughs> so it is a lot of work that goes involved to getting those videos. So that's why we do one a week. We'd like to do more. And, you know, we're working on that too. We've got some other things going on as well. So it takes a, a part of our time. So it's very involved each and every video, but we love it. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.